bring curiosity, the willingness to learn and grow to the table and you'll definitely make it in Germany. So working in Germany makes me evolve constantly and this is an evolutionary lifestyle, I would say. I love that. Hello and welcome to Inside Deutschland, your guide to careers in Germany. This podcast provides you with insight into working in Germany and covers topics such as the do's and don'ts for job interviews, pitfalls to avoid in communicating with employers and colleagues, and how to navigate opportunities and challenges across the German labor market. I am your host, Jessica Schuler, a Germany-focused career coach, trainer, and international educator. As part of the Inside Deutschland podcast, I will be interviewing people from all across the globe who have been successful in Germany so that you can learn from their experiences and expertise. Get ready for an exciting series with eight episodes during which we're going to delve into the ins and outs of career development in Germany. In each episode, we'll be talking with a subject expert as well as a DAD alum who will share their firsthand experiences. In our debut episode, we're taking it back to the basics, because everyone starts somewhere, right? We'll be talking about the general requirements for working in Germany, and we'll check if you're prepared for your career journey. We'll also figure out if Germany is the right spot for your career and what exciting opportunities it has in store for you. My own personal career journey started with a high school exchange year in Passau and continued with an internship near Munich at the German Federal Employment Agency. Although I ended up earning my bachelor's degree in the United States, where I'm from, I landed my first job out of college in Germany at a university. In that role, I was tasked with building a career service for international students, where I discovered my passion for helping people navigate the options and opportunities in Germany. I've since dedicated my professional life to helping ambitious international students and expats land jobs and launch careers in a country I love dearly. For this reason, I'm really excited to be your host as we learn from and with experts and alums about what it takes to succeed professionally in this country. Today, I'll be in conversation with two individuals who've been exactly where you are now, at the beginning and figuring out how to navigate the German labor market. You've already heard a glimpse into my discussion with Christina Alam, who's a DAD alumna with over 15 years of international work experience across Germany, the United States, and India. She's worked with industry giants such as BMW, Bosch, and Siemens, and specializes in digital transformation consulting. But first up, we have the pleasure of speaking with Mikael Ninchu, an immigration law consultant at the Cologne Institute for Economic Research. She has lots of experience in assisting internationals in finding work in Germany. Mikael also works on the communication campaign Make It in Germany. She's going to tell us more about her experiences and about finding work in Germany. So let's jump right in. Hello, Mikael, and welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. For over a decade, you've been involved in researching and creating structures that assist internationals in finding work in Germany. You and I also share that we are both alumni of the University of Oldenburg in Germany. What has your personal career looked like to start off with? I studied at the University of Oldenburg Economics and Law. And in 2011, I graduated from university. And uh, after a brief spell at the, uh, the German here telecommunication company in the sector of project management, I just changed to the German Economic Institute, IW Köln, as a researcher in the field of uh, innovation, migration, and my uh, focus was the topic of migration. We then started in June uh, with Make It in Germany as a communication campaign for people who want to come to Germany to start working here. Yes. And so alongside your colleagues, you, you manage the Make It in Germany portal. Can you tell us a little bit about the portal and what the goals of the platform are? Yes, actually, we started as a communication campaign. So what the, the idea was to inform people uh, from abroad how they can uh, start here a career in Germany, given that at that time, the general discussion in the topic of migration was the uh, lack of uh, skilled workers in some economic sector in Germany. The question has been, how can we manage that? So there is not enough, uh, there are not enough uh, skilled workers in Germany in order to resolve the problem. So the other idea was to encourage labor migration. And 
We also uh, observe at that point, Germany was not really well known abroad as a place to be for uh, skilled workers. And we had the idea to, uh, to start a website to imp- uh, inform those people about the, uh, the immigration opportunities in Germany. And also the context in 2012 was also the adoption for the first time in the German uh, immigration law of the blue card. And uh, yes, people from third countries can come to Germany and, and get the blue card. And the blue card was first adopted into the German law. And we start make it in Germany by promoting that uh, blue card regulation. Around 2018, the uh, platform, let's say the platform itself, but the project, the cult of the project, make it in Germany, has become the official platform for the German government to attract professional from abroad. Now, at the end, 2018 was the time where the whole, let's say, the complete German government endorsed make it in Germany as the official platform for immigration to Germany. So the platform has seen a lot of growth in the last 10 years alone. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yes. How many people does the platform serve? Yes, actually, we have about 65 million people who have already come to make it in Germany. 80% of them are living abroad, so outside Germany. The website is in four languages. So English, German, French, and Spanish. And But our English website is the one that has the most um Let's say the most clicks, Mm -hmm. yeah. (laughs) Most traffic, yeah, I believe. Yeah, the most traffic, yeah. Yeah. So if internationals are interested in working with the, or using the Make It in Germany platform, what's the best way for them to get started? So if they want to use Make It in Germany as an information platform, it's the best way to do, because we give the first information to do. We have, for example, a tool on our webpage called the Quick Check. So with the Quick Check, for example, by answering three or four questions, you can already get an idea if you have a chance to come to Germany for your intended purposes. You can be for working purpose, for educational purpose, so training or studying, or to join your family or to set up a business. So are we really differentiate on what are the uh, intended uh, purposes of people to come to Germany. So by answering those four, four questions, you can just have a first idea orientation, what are the next steps to do. So we promote the labor migration. That means for us, it's important to get all those people who want to come to Germany for working reason to have real details information. So if someone, for example, has a concrete willing to come for working, I, I will also, uh, uh, let's say, suggest to visit our job listing. So we have a job listing on our web page where people from abroad can look after open vacancies in Germany. And the particularity with this job listing is that these are the one open back vacancies where a German employers are willing to hire people from abroad. So they are addressing people abroad about their intention to hire them. So if someone finds such an interesting vacancy on Make It in Germany, it would probably get a good chance to be employed. But we do not make the job placement ourselves. So we only uh, make the platform available for German companies to publish their vacancies. And if people in outside of Germany see that vacancies are interested, they have to contact the German company because on the web job listing, we also have the contact of the German employers. You said at the beginning, people weren't really clear like about why Germany might be a good place for their career or there was kind of this need to convince people or, or to introduce them to the idea of Germany as a place for work and careers. So from your perspective and kind of what you've seen, why should internationals consider Germany when they're looking for their next job or looking for developing their career? Yeah, that's actually a very good question. <laughs> okay, yeah. So there are many advantages, actually. So uh, from my personal perspective, so I, I'm not born in Germany, right? So I came also here uh, for many years as an international student. The question is, maybe I will, uh, base, I will base my... Uh, my response to my personal yes uh, experience in Germany, and I think working in Germany has one big advantage is that you have social security system as an employee you are you are covered by a social security system so and it covers the healthcare system the unemployment uh, benefits uh, you have 
a good service so that you have we can also have very good quality of life so and the, the employment rights are protected here by law and there's a small chances that for when you will uh, get the experience of a uh, salary dumping or something like that so the rights of employees are very protected in the german system and that is something that was for, for me very interesting and the good quality of life that is also offered and uh, because there are other countries that could be very interesting for international professional actually but talking about germany apart from the the economy yes it's a, it's, a, it's a big economy but this is also an aspect that is very cr- uh, crucial for me for example yeah and it's something that that really impacts the day to day life too. Like if I compare what it looks like to manage healthcare and insurance yes. in the U.S. versus Germany, mm. Germany yeah. hands down like wins yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a big difference, and it makes a difference too. Those those systems mm-hmm. and those structures and the the way that their things are just processed and managed mm-hmm. that impacts your day to day life. And like you said, it really yeah. increases your life quality for sure. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So what do you think internationals need to know before they make the decision to move to Germany for work? Since they are coming for work, it is important that they are first check if the employment they, or the job they want to, to take in Germany, if, they say, uh, if there's a requirement for a specific qualification for this employment. And if yes, they should check whether their qualification is recognized in Germany. Yeah. Coming depending on the professions, if it is a regulated profession or not, it can be some cases where you have to do a formal recognition procedure. So, and this is also why we, in our quick check, we also ask the question on the qualification. So, first, check out if the employment, uh, the job in Germany, require a specific qualification. If yes, it, do you have uh, this qualification? Is it recognized in Germany? If not yet recognized in Germany, we can also, that is what also we do, uh, make it in Germany, we give the first information and how to do the procedure to get the qualification recognized. First, when you have cleared the question about the recognition, then we can start get the information on the visa and how to ap- apply for a visa. Because for most of the visa, I'm talking about third country nationals, right? Mm-hmm. And the recognition uh, procedure is a, re- is a pre-requirement. Without the recognition of the qualification, there is no way that someone will get a working visa. There is some exceptions, but for all third country nationals, this is what I would recommend. First, think about the qualification and get the right information on that. So with that in mind, who do you think Germany or kind of employment opportunities in Germany is a good choice for, or maybe are there groups who, for which it's not the best choice? Okay, there are actually the profession that we call professions in demand. So there are many <laughs> such professions actually. Since 2012, the STEM profession occupation was the one called, yeah, professions in demand. So the one in the science is the uh, technicians. Uh, the uh, mathematicians, the uh, IT specialists, and so on. These are still the professions in demand, but they are more than that. So, for example, in the agricultural system, in the educational system, lecturers, for example, school teachers, they are also profession craft people, for example, they are also in demand. So we have also physicians, nursing care. So in the healthcare system, the most uh, profession occupations in the healthcare system are actually in demand. And uh, for all those professions in general, you need a formal qualification. Yes, that is also recognized in Germany. And only for some few, like the IT specialists, where in some circumstances, the formal qualification is not required, but for the most of them, you have to get the recognition of the qualification. Yeah. Yeah, most of those are are very um, regulated professions in the German yeah, context. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Sorry. So thinking across kind of the spectrum of professions, to what extent is German critical for finding work in Germany? Does it vary by industry or job, or do you just kind of blanket say everyone needs to learn German? Oh, yeah, it depends very on the industry. Yes, in some industries and in some regions. So in the eastern region, it's more critical than in the western region because they are also experiencing this uh, immigration. Yes, people are leaving the eastern part of the country to come to the western part, and they, the companies there have the difficulties to get new staff for their companies and. Uh, also, I've spoken about the healthcare system. The whole like, healthcare system 
actually is uh, really uh, dying on the, this problem of uh, skills shortages. And this is also why the new regulation that is still to come now focus on that aspect too, to make it easier for people from abroad to come to Germany to take vocational training né, in this uh, profession and to make it easier for all those who have successful for completed their studies in that uh, or their training in that field to stay in Germany to take up employment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for the vast majority of the apprenticeships within the vocational training system, you yeah. need to know German. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, of course. So German skills, actually, very important. What I think is the new thing that will, what will come with the new law is that German skill will not be any more a prerequisite for the visa application. So they are, they is given the, for the most people, they will be given opportunity to come first in Germany to learn the language here. Excellent. Are there any types of visas for international professionals that you would highlight or mention? Um, yes, at this point, maybe I would like to mention that there is also a job seeker visa for international students. So there are two kinds of job seekers visa, actually. We have that one for up to six months for all international professionals that come to Germany with a foreign degree and they have to fulfill the B2, B2 level in, in German. And there is another job seeking visa for international students. So all these uh, international students who came to Germany with, on a student visa, they are successfully completed their study here in the country. And now they have the opportunity to get a visa for job seeking for up to 18 months. So I think in terms of attra attractiveness, uh, Germany is one of the countries that gives so big opportunities to international students, and international graduates here. So they have up to 18 months now to stay here and look for a qualified employment. If they find one, they can change into a working visa, a regular working visa. And uh, during that job seeking time, then they can do also every kind, any kind of uh, employment that is not restricted. I think this is one thing I would like to mention here and to underline for international students that the opportunities for working after studying here are very good, very, very good. It's a very generous post-study work visa scheme yes. for sure. And then beyond visas, we also have the Skilled Immigration Act in Germany. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about what that is and how it helps people? Yes, I've already mentioned the opportunity card. This is one aspect of this uh, new skill immigration act. We will also have a new regulation on the blue card where we will have a blue card open to uh, IT specialists who do not have any formal qualification, for example. We will also have improvements for international students. They have now more opportunities, also extended time to work during their studies in Germany. We'll also have new opportunities for those who have done a vocational training in uh, nursing care abroad and then want to come to Germany to work with their qualifications. So the process for them has been made easier. And uh, we will also have improvement for the recognition procedure. Not the recognition procedure itself, but for the people who want to take further training here in order to get their qualification fully recognized. So... For all these three or four groups of people, we have uh, good uh, improvements. So lots of positive changes coming for people from mm -hmm. abroad who are looking for work in Germany. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, sharing with us about the portal, and we'll definitely make sure to send people your way. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. When it comes to relocating abroad and launching a career in a foreign country, there's a lot to do, including the potential challenge of mastering a new language. Mikael shed light on essential factors to contemplate before making the significant move. Don't forget that you can also check out our show notes for a direct link to the Make It in Germany portal and the handy quick check. Make It in Germany also has a hotline that you can call if you have any questions that are not answered on the website. Now, let's shift our focus to someone who's already, quote unquote, made it in Germany and can tell us how she did it. Our second guest is Christina Alam, a DAD alumna with 15 years of extensive experience in Germany's professional landscape. She's currently starting up her own journey in entrepreneurial consultancy between Germany and the Middle East and concurrently serves as a mentor for aspiring young professionals looking to launch their careers in Germany. Hi, Christina, and welcome to the show. Hi, Jessica. Thank you for your invitation. It's great to have you. 
Let's go ahead and dive right in. You were born in Russia, grew up in Lebanon, and ended up in Germany with fluency in five languages. Could you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your own career journey? Sure. So at the age of 16, I had the opportunity to visit Europe, and I truly got fascinated by Germany, its level of organization and systematic approach in doing things. And since I was good in mathematics in school and was interested in technology, I have decided to study abroad in Germany, being one of the leading nations in many technological fields. Coming from a beautiful but chaotic Mediterranean country, I got excited to learn about the German culture. And after graduating from the TUM, the uh, Technology University in Munich, and holding a master's degree uh, of science in electrical and IT engineering, I built my career of 15 years around innovation and digital transformation in multinational corporations. So what I did, I tried to help big companies like Siemens, Bosch, BMW, and latest Accenture Consulting in the digital transition by building new digital products and services in sectors of mobility and building technology. But now I'm exploring a vision I've always had about building bridges between the EU and the Middle East. So since uh, I originate from Lebanon and speak multiple languages, including Arabic, French, German, and Russian, I'm on a mission to help German startups and SMEs, small medium enterprises, to transfer their technologies and expand their businesses to the Middle East and particularly to the UAE. So I also want to help institutions in the private sector in the UAE to foster innovation in the German technologies and assure its sustainable execution and adoption. And what factors influenced your decisions? Sure. So when I moved to Germany, I was very young. Um, At the age of 18, it was pretty important to me to live in a safe place and uh, And personally, uh, coming from a Mediterranean country, uh, the sun factor was quite important to me. So I have chosen Munich because it's the second sunniest city in Germany after Freiburg. Uh, But (laughs) yeah, but being, let's say, serious now, uh, Munich is also a very vibrant city, plenty of activities. It's culturally very rich, very international and it's close to nature and all those factors offer at the end of the day a great uh, life balance. You've mentioned in an interview with the alumni Pota Deutschland that you wished you would have liked to have a mentor or support group to guide you through the process of moving to Germany for study and for working. What challenges did you face and how did you overcome them? True. Um, So since I strongly believe that success is related to the level of integration in a new place, I have wished while moving to Germany to have more contacts with local people to better understand the language, their tradition, um, and the mentality overall. Um, This would have helped me to connect even more with local pals at the university and avoid cultural misunderstandings which sometimes make you feel uncomfortable. Just a quick example. Since I come from a small Mediterranean country, people in Lebanon tend to never say no directly. As in Germany, I have experienced the opposite, the very direct way of communication. So I was sometimes shocked at the beginning by the word no, when people simply very honestly and openly tried to say that something was impossible or um, was not related to the matter. Since I believe that there is always a a way when there is a will, it took me quite long to accept the no, the direct no, but now I believe it's a huge benefit and it's important to learn to say no and set boundaries and limitations. So this is one of the great learnings from that experience. That's great. And what would you do differently now? Well, it's a very good question. I would proactively approach people, potential mentors, being in the context of the university or uh, while gaining professional experiences. And I would, I would build a stronger relationships with locals or local professionals. And I would not hesitate to ask for help 
and, and start conversations and ask for feedback. I would definitely also listen better from what or from how I did it before. Okay. After your studies, you began a career path. How did you find your first job? Wow, that first job. Yeah. If you remember, 2008 um, was a big year. That was the year for me personally, very important since I graduated from university. I was super happy and proud. But at the same time, it was we had a financial crisis. So uh, believe it or not, many companies stopped hiring uh, graduates. So I had to look beyond Munich and the UM and all the big companies based in Munich. So lucky me, um, I got accepted from a few at the Bosch leadership program back in the days, since Bosch uh, based in Stuttgart did not restrict uh, the hiring process uh, back in the days. And I was very privileged to um, be part of that program, to rotate within the company, within Germany and even abroad in the US and have an amazing mentor who gave me the opportunity to be part of innovation projects and learn a lot, but also achieve some good results during those two years. What do you think internationals need to know before starting their first job in Germany? Well, I would uh, recommend internationals to reflect, research and think about the German working culture, processes, in order not to be surprised. This includes also the bureaucratic aspects, the culture of discussions, alignments in corporations, but of course, the rights and responsibilities, the quality standards and uh, what companies stand for, their value systems, because that could also differ depending on the type of companies they work for. And based off of your now 15 years of experience, how would you describe the German work culture? Yeah, that's a very good question. I would describe the German working culture in specific words, which depict the German working culture to me uh, very clearly, which is reliability, punctuality, process orientation, efficiency, long planning, and definitely quality execution. That's great. What can an international expect when it comes to climbing the career ladder in Germany? Or do you think it's even possible without a good command of German? I personally, based on my, let's say, 15 years of professional experience and, and um, living in Germany for now more than 20 years, I would say mastering the German language would definitely help in climbing the ladder, especially in traditional German corporations. Leadership is all about communication and building bridges to other people. So the higher you want to get, the better your German should be, especially if you want to plan to settle down in Germany, build a foundation and also build a whole career. But to add to this, nowadays, many international companies are also settling down in Germany. So in this context, definitely, I would say English would be the leading language. Nevertheless, that should not discourage people and professionals to learn and master the German language. Absolutely. What are the benefits of working in Germany compared to other countries from your perspective? Oh, like in everything in life and you have pros and cons. Germany has a strong social system. It has a solid and stable working environment. Working in Germany allows people, in my personal opinion, to better plan long term and balance their professional career and have a creative balance with their private life and family. And what do you like most about working in Germany since you've been here for 20 years now? Sure. <laughs> well, I personally love the challenge for growth, bring curiosity, the willingness to learn and grow uh, to the table and you'll definitely make it in Germany. So Working in Germany makes me evolve constantly. And this is an evolutionary lifestyle, I would say. I love that. You are also active as a mentor for young professionals from around the world, and you organize German-Lebanese meetups. What does your engagement with this look like and what motivates you to be involved in these causes? 
Yeah, I have always loved to share my professional and life experiences with the younger generation and particularly the one coming from a different cultural background. So I have been volunteering as a mentor, helping international professionals, young professionals in their career journey when they are moving to Germany. In addition, I have organized a German delegation trip to Lebanon to introduce the startup ecosystem, the local startup ecosystem, and build networks between the participants and the local players. Last but not least, uh, contributing to others' success journey by adding my personal experience to it makes me happy. I always like to help. Christina, thank you so much for being here with us and for sharing your experience with our audience. Jessica, thank you so much for this experience and it was fun chatting with you. Thank you. It was really inspiring talking to Christina and I'm excited to hear more from her in the future and see where her journey takes her. As we wrap up this episode, we want to leave you with three important tips from our engaging conversations with Christina and Mikael about launching your career in Germany. First things first, start by learning about visa requirements. Before considering working in Germany, research the specific visa requirements that apply to your situation. Depending on your qualifications, profession, and nationality, different visas may be available, and understanding the visa process is crucial for a smooth transition to Germany. You can use the Make It in Germany quick check to get started. We'll link to it in the show notes. Then make sure you acquire basic German language skills. Having at least a beginner understanding of German can significantly improve your job prospects and overall experience in the country. I recommend aiming to complete at least the A2 level before you arrive. Finally, tip number three, stay informed about changing regulations. Germany is continuously updating its immigration laws and regulations in order to attract international professionals. One way in which they're doing this is with the Skilled Immigration Act. To stay informed about changes and get regular updates, subscribe to the Make It in Germany newsletter, which we will link to in the show notes. In the next episode, we will talk about navigating your academic path, including studying and researching in Germany. My name is Jessica Schuler, and this is Inside Deutschland, your guide to careers in Germany. Thanks for listening. Christina, do you have a favorite German word related to working in Germany? It's complex and eventually complicated to pronounce, but it's called Zuverlässigkeit, which means reliability. And if I think of Germany or the working culture in Germany compared to other working cultures in other countries, definitely people appreciate the reliability of the German working culture. That's why it's my favorite word. Inside Deutschland, your guide to careers in Germany is a podcast brought to you by the Alumni Portal Deutschland. I am your host, Jessica Schuler. Sound design, music, and production by Anne Bergner from Der Apparat Multimedia GmbH. Editing and production by Jessica Schuler, as well as Amelie Berbot and Leonie Klusendorf from Der Apparat Multimedia GmbH.